Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the committee. Uh, thank you for uh, hearing uh, our legislation today. This is a uh, Senate committee substitute for Senate Bill 29. It deals with uh, labor organizations, and particularly uh, this bill uh, is not known as Paycheck Protection. And what it does is it uh, bars public uh, employee labor unions from withholding fees from uh, public employee paychecks. The act requires the public employees' consent for public employee unions to use fees and dues for political purposes. Uh, so the employee is kind of in charge. Uh, they must authorize the amount to be used for political contributions and uh, they can also siphon what committee uh, will be paid. And uh, so uh, authorizing or refraining from uh, authorizing any amount shall not affect their employment. And the labor union must keep uh, records of all authorizations and submit them to the Labor and Industrial uh, Relations Commission. You know, uh, I kind of relate this somewhat to I do, what I do as a, as a real living, and that is practice veterinary medicine. And when we do something uh, to a person's animal, we have a, an agreement called informed consent that they have to sign off on. I have to inform them of what I plan to do uh, very closely as possible, what the costs are going to be. And I feel that uh, uh, this falls kind of under that category, uh, informed consent. Uh, that employee should know uh, how much money is going to be withheld, uh, where it's going to be spent, and have some control over what gets done. Uh, we specifically, in, in this legislation, uh, left out first responders and uh, uh, subdivision three of section 192.800 uh, as uh, not having to apply to this act. And I would like, I will try to answer questions that anyone may have. Thank you, Senator. Questions of the Senate? Senator Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator um, So I've looked over your sub, and I do have some questions. Okay. Um, I guess the first, the first question from a policy perspective is why are we prohibiting the ability to um, payroll deduct dues? I mean, the, the first second, like why, are, why are we prohibiting it as opposed to making it an option? If we really want the individual to be in charge, shouldn't they have the option to choose whether they want it deducted from their check or not? They do have the option to choose to do that uh, with what uh, is in place. I think what it does, it keeps the state of Missouri from banking for a union. Don't uh, we do it for a number of charitable deductions now? Can't uh, we payroll deduct all kinds of stuff if we choose to? Yeah, there's a few of them. So then there. why would we draw a distinction? Uh, I think because these probably play more in the political process than some of the charitable stuff. Okay. Um, so, are you, uh, under the current system, that they can, but under, under your sub, you know, 105, 504, section 1, it says that no sum shall be withheld, so... We, I mean, would we be able to, to make that an opt-in if the worker decides they want it withheld? My understanding is that they can opt, that that can occur now if they want it withheld. This simply gives them the choice that they haven't gotten. <coughs> maybe, maybe I'm misunderstanding because your sub is what would be the new law, which then says no sum shall be withheld. Um, so your sub would then change the law to make it to where you can't withhold. I'm simply asking what's wrong with the status quo if the, or maybe we want to make it, if, if you're not happy with the status quo, maybe we want to make it um, a more, um, more of a, a choice that's paid attention to in the, in the enrollment process or when, when you are employed or, I, mean, I, I guess I just don't understand why we're 
why we're saying we want to be in control, but we're taking away options. Well, if you go over to uh, page two, uh, subsection three, and uh, you know there will be forms that they can authorize to have some of these things done. Well, that authorizes contribution to the political fund, right? That has nothing to do with whether or not it's deducted from their paycheck. Well, I think separate issue. What we, I, I think what we're what we're saying is they should have the option. Or, or that they should not be required to have a deduction from the paycheck, that they make that contribution themselves, some of the informed consent. So. <coughs> right, and, and I'm, I'm fine with saying that they shouldn't be required to, but the way I read this is that you won't be able to. Right. And, I, and I think that's my concern. Not that, I, I'm with you, we shouldn't require anything, we should leave it up to the work. But I think this, the way it's currently crafted, removes the option for payroll deduction altogether from the worker. And I'll work with you on that issue. And yeah. the, the bill I had before, uh, there, it did allow. Uh, and uh, my understanding was it was still in there. So uh, let me do some further checking. That wasn't my intent. Although I wonder sometimes why should anyone be required to withhold <coughs> that prior authorization. No, and I agree, we shouldn't require them without prior authorization, but, but my, I'm just saying if, if they sign off on it and say, yes, I would like this to be withheld, that, that that should be an option for them. And is that a difference in just sending it in? Well, sure, because if, you know, let's say, and I know that, I, I believe it was um, one of the other senators um, mentioned the option of having it withheld from your, or direct paid out of your checking account, right. which is an option for, for a lot of people, but there are a number of um, employees you know, particularly if, since you're looking at targeting just public employees, um, that you know, I, you would know as well as anybody being on appropriations. Some of those job classes that we have in the state don't pay very much at all. I mean, right. nineteen, twenty thousand dollars, and they may not be in a situation where their credit is good enough or their finances are in good enough shape to even have a checking account. And so, if I just want to make sure that we aren't removing options from people, would be would be my my concern on that. Um, but uh, the other, Mr. Chairman, do you, can I go through my other questions with this up now? Or? Let me do roll call real sure. quick and sure. you can continue on. Go ahead and call the vote. <coughs> Senators Parson? Here. Sylvie? Here. Cunningham? Here. Kehoe? Here. Lavota? Here. Machine? Here. Wasson? Here. Yep. Quorum being established, we'll go ahead and go into regular session at this time. And Senator Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my second question is on the annual consent that's required uh, under the substitute. Um, once an employee has consented, as far as the political dues goes, um, once an employee has consented initially to have their, uh, to contribute to those political funds, um, I guess I'm curious as to why we need to have that annual paperwork burden of consenting every single year, would you be open to the option of a notif like a required notification every year that, hey, by the way, you are currently contributing to the political fund and it is As long as they're notified and they have the option of changing where they're spent. So rather than affirmatively no, requiring I mean, the way that you absolutely do it is, is that you have to inform sure. every year. Sure. And, uh, but as opposed to requiring the, the unions to collect signatures from everybody every 12 months, can we give them the option of you will inform them? You can even lay it out like you have here, so many fonts, so whatever page, just saying you are currently contributing to the political fund and you have the option of opting out at any time and if you choose to opt out. Well, I would like to see what your suggestion is before okay. I say would do or not do. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, and then, um, the, the um, deletion of the first responders, I question whether or not that's an equal protection problem. Because if we have public employees that we're treating differently than other public employees, um, I, I guess I question what's the genesis? Why did we carve out that particular job class? Uh, this uh, uh, resulted uh, with some negotiations last year that were made, and uh, 
uh, it was felt that uh, first responders, and and honestly, I, I, I must tell you, I don't remember exactly all the discussion that was had, uh, but that was an agreement that we made uh, to try to move this legislation forward last year. So, I, I think I understand why that agreement would be made. <coughs> if Do you want to put them back in? If you're trying to, well, I'm just asking, does it endanger the entire bill? I mean, does it open us up to a lawsuit that, you know, we're treating uh, other employees? to the uh, Senate Research, and they're not always right, or we're not always right, so. Okay. Well, that, that was my question, Mr. Thank you. Further questions for witness? Yes, Good evening, Senator. Good evening. How are you? Great. How are you? Good. So, you have a problem with withholding <coughs> from public employee, employees. Right. Why? Well, I, I don't think that the state of Missouri or the city of you name it uh, is a bank for the labor union. So this is about the unions, not the employees. This is about the, the, well, the all-out attack on the union, on the unionized labor. Well, that's what this is about, right? Payroll protection, uh, or paycheck protection. I don't know. If maybe that's your. I, I maybe that's your. Let's, let's just be honest, though. I mean, this is an attack on organized labor. Unions. Maybe an attack on how they do business, but it's not as, I don't think. It, you can yeah. still unionize. It doesn't. So, so, so tell me this here. So tell me this here. How many union employees you talk to have a problem with withholdings? I wouldn't say millions. Uh, there's been a fair number of state employees. Okay. Uh, would they be here to testify today? No, they won't. I've never seen any of them testify. The whole time we've been dealing with this bill, I've never seen an employee, an employer come and testify and say that we're sick and tired of giving our dues to the unions. We just want to stop it. I've never, I've never had the opportunity to see that. Can't wait to see it, though. Uh, however, let's hypothetically speak, and let's say I were, I'm a public employee, and I decide that I want to just opt out. I mean, your bill will allow me to just opt out of it, right? I won't have to pay dues. Will I still get the benefits? Uh, you know, and, and that's always a discussion that we had. You know, do you still, uh, and, and what benefits are being offered? Uh, uh, just give me a question. Yes or this is a yes or no. Will you still get the benefits if you're not paying into it? Probably you would on the state level. On the local level, I would say probably. You will, right, yeah. you will. So what you're saying is that people that decide to, to stay in and have their money taken out, people who decide that they don't want to put their money in can just free load. On I think they should have a choice, and uh, I guess that, uh, I mean, what, what uh, it, it's not just the union that, uh, Provide those benefits. I, I just I don't. I just don't think that people should have a right to opt out and continue to receive the same benefits. If you want those benefits, allow for your monies to be taken out of your paycheck. If there are uh, benefits coming from the union itself, I'm sure that you would lose those benefits. I mean, I'm a member of the uh, Veterinary Medical Association. If I don't, I think we need to quit benefits. being afraid of the unions. That's what I think. I think we need to quit being afraid of the unions. Those individuals who are out there who, 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 who seems to think that they need to destroy unions out of whatever fears they may have, just need to quit. I'm not this is an attack on the unions. This is something I, I would never support. Um, and it's really unfortunate that it's keep coming up here uh, in the state capitol because it's it's too political. It's not about the, the employees. This is not about the employees. Make no mistake about it. This is about. So, as a union employee, you don't have any, an attack on have unionized choice. workers. I'm done. Thanks. Further questions, 
Senator, can you explain your, the the purpose of of uh, the section? Uh, any public labor organization that uses a portion of the dues, agency shop fees, or other fees to make contributions um, goes on shall maintain the records. That's that's kind of a different subject than not being able to take them from the employee in the first place. Well, I think it's kind of you got kind of two things going on here. And I'm, the employee has a right to know where their money goes. That, that's what's been brought to me by some employees. I may not support. Don't do that. You, so your contention is that they don't know where it goes now. Yes. They they, they ask they, their. They know it may not want it to go to that particular political pact or whatever. They have a. So they're a telling you opinion. that there's no process or anything within their organization to ask about where money goes or even vote on where it goes or they can elect ask leadership where it and goes but they don't that. feel that they have much influence or determination of where it's actually spent. Okay. I think, okay. I just want to know where you're where you're coming from on this. I I would echo Senator Nasheed's comment that I'd I'd love to have an employee come and actually testify that they find any of this to be a problem. So. I think we're going to have a couple here. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank Both you, Mr. Questions. Chairman. Thank you. Senator Silver. Mr. Chairman, if I could follow up. Just to clarify, based on Senator Sheets' um, inquiry, I'm a little, I, I want to make sure there's no confusion. So your substitute doesn't relieve the worker of the requirement that they pay dues. It just... Right, I mean, they're still going to owe the dues if they don't have them taken out of their paycheck. Now, yeah, it does if they're going to be if if they want to be uh, uh, contribute to the packs or whatever. Well, I believe that's a different section, though. I mean, I think that I think that's two different issues. The dues and the political contributions are, are separated. So I, I I see that they would have the option to not consent to having set, paying dues for the purpose of political, and I see that over on page two, but. And if you don't have it taken out of your paycheck, and it's a condition of your employment because of the collective bargaining agreement between the public entity and, and the labor union, you're still going to owe your dues. You're just going to have to physically cut a check or pay cash or have it taken out of your bank account as opposed to having it taken out up front. Is that right? They're still paying dues. Well, uh, it says no, no sum shall be withheld from the earnings of any public employee for the purpose of paying any portion of dues, agency shop fees, or any other fees paid by public employee members right, and that, public labor organization. And that addresses the collection up front, which now happens yeah. through payroll deduction, but it doesn't say that you're no longer required to pay dues if that's part of the collective bargaining agreement. I mean, you still have to pay those dues, don't you? Uh, I would say probably under, under the present uh, labor organization that uh, if you say a member of the union, you would, and I guess if you're employed as a blanket employment, that you would have to pay dues. So the so the sections of the bill really are: the first addresses the collection mechanism of dues and PAC funds, portions of those dues. The second gives you the option to say, I don't want to contribute to the PAC, or you can direct your contribution. Where it goes, where it's been. Okay, but that's separate from the collection of dues because right. the PAC fund and the dues are two separate. And I'm sure if you're not paying union dues, you wouldn't have a say so on how it was spent. Right, but I'm wondering if so, if if let's say I'm a union, in, a union worker in a public sector union and no longer is this being taken out of my paycheck, the dues aren't being taken out of the paycheck, and I just stop paying dues, then that threatens my employment status, doesn't it? No, uh, I'm still required to pay the dues. Uh, in the state of Missouri, I don't think you are. There are some of our uh, employees that are uh, union members, some are not. But it probably depends on the collective bargaining agreement, doesn't it? I don't think that uh, we have a there was an executive order signed that allowed state workers to unionize, but not collective bargaining. Governor Holden did that. Okay, I, I'm still a little confused, but Senator, uh, I 
guess to clarify this for the time being, you, you're okay with the enforcement of Senator Sylvia trying to. I'd be glad to. I'm glad to know that he has an interest. And, uh, talking about this a little bit more. Yeah. I don't think, uh, by all means, I don't think we're in any hurry to <coughs> get this out real quick. So <coughs> we'll get a room to do it. You're okay with that? I am. Senator's on. No, I'm any, any further questions? Seeing that, do you have anyone to testify? I think there's a couple of people that have Anyone to testify in support of Senate Committee Substitute, Senate Bill 29? Mr. Chair, members of the committee, my name is Philip Todd. I'm a uh, citizen of the 10th Senatorial District, and I'm here to speak in favor of this bill. I have a little different angle here, being that I was a member of a private union uh, as a former bricklayer, but I want to shed a little bit of light about how um, how our dues are somewhat used in uh, uh, ways that, that uh, we cannot support. I've had this t-shirt in my garage for many, many years, and I want to use this in, as an example so that I can go ahead and uh, expand upon my, uh, my, my reasoning. You will notice that this shirt says Gebhardt, BAC supports Gebhardt 2004. And I'll show this back to the people in the, in the back as well. One day, I was in our business office, and it was probably a rainy day or something like that, we were unable to work, and I was handed this shirt, and I opened it up, and I looked at it, and I said, give her 2004. Okay, that's cool, but don't you think we ought to see if the man can win a primary first before we put money behind it? Of course, at that point, I would have never voted for the man in the first place, but I didn't want to necessarily tip my hand because of certain hostilities that are not, not following along the, uh, uh, the line. And their response to me was, well, we just had some extra money laying around and we thought we'd go ahead and spend it. And at that point, it really hit me that I really had no say in how my dues, how a portion of my dues was, was being spent. I saw a recent study, and I apologize, I don't have the, 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 the source, that, that uh, uh, says that unions collect about $14 billion a year through their collective bargaining agreements. Out of that number, approximately 70%, which could be anywhere between 10 and $11 billion, can be used directly for political activism and, and supporting political candidates. Folks, this is a considerable <laughs> amount of money that is used against people who have conservative values. And whenever I started bringing up the, uh, uh, the fact in my union that um, I was uncomfortable with money going to political campaigns and candidates and causes that that they did not uh, uh, that I that I could not support. I was basically uh, pushed back on the bench, and eventually I just never really had any employment. I was under uh, under the understanding that there was a clause in our contract where we could opt out of a very small portion of the monthly dues, but don't dare ask them anything about opting out on that because I guarantee. All hell will break loose and the wrath of the union will come down upon anybody who disagrees. But the money that's collected in dues is generally, we have no control. It was already predetermined a long time before I ever picked up this t was given this t-shirt where that money was going to be spent. I don't remember anybody asking me if I was comfortable with an endorsement of Richard Gebhardt or anybody, I don't remember anybody asking me if I was even comfortable with endorsing a Democrat at that particular time. They just went ahead and did it because they just happened to have the money. So this is the reason that I'm here for. Uh, it's a little different take, but it's all the same process whenever we're paying dues into a union. Uh, that money, a lot of that money is being used against what we believe in, and to me that's irresponsible. And to force somebody, to compel somebody to pay that portion of their dues and then have that money being used against them is uh, it, it, it's just unconscionable that we would allow that to happen. So uh, I thank you for your time. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to look. Uh, thank, thank, thank you for coming and testifying. You said you were from the 11th district, is that correct? 10th, 10th district, yes. Where is that? Holt Summit, right Holt across the river. It used to be the 6th district with Senator Kehoe, and they uh, moved this around. So. Hometown Senator? Your, your, your buddy, the judge, is Senator Parson, uh, took Mr. Todd out of my district. Oh, 
I see. I see. <laughs> <laughs> Further questions of the Senator? Or the Senator? I thank you for your testimony. But if you're still angry, you probably can file an ethics report because I didn't see paid for by on that shirt. <laughs> That's very possible. I hadn't really thought about that. But I'm no longer a member of the union. I uh, eventually moved ahead and, uh, uh, you know, uh, and uh, developed other business opportunities. But uh, the thing was at that, at, at that point, whenever they started handing these shirts, I started realizing that I wasn't in control of any of the portion of dues. And the thing is, if, if 10 or $11 billion of, of this $14 billion a year is, is being used for political causes, and it looks to me like the dues, the, the dues that are actually needed to operate the locals and the benefit programs and things like that could be reduced significantly. So um, I, I just want to make that point. Thank you. Thank you. Further, further questions? I, I just want to say, I appreciate your testimony. I can relate being in, in an organization where the minority's voice isn't heard, and um, um, they're, they're, they don't get any say whatsoever. I spent eight years in the Missouri House, so I understand. Thank you. It's a new day in the Senate, though, Senator. Yeah, Senator Sellers. Thank you. Um, I also appreciate your testimony, and, and just, um, want you to know my father is in a union it's very much the same position that, that you are as far as you know the, the candidates that his union chooses to endorse by and large don't match uh, where he personally would be um, but this bill uh, doesn't it only affects public sector so is this something you would like to see extended to everybody I would I would be in favor of it extending to everybody I think that it's uh, it's completely reasonable and uh, uh, you know because we have, uh, I know that there were a lot of members within my union, even though it was a, a private union rather than a public sector union, we're all basically paying dues and, and they tend, the money tends to go to, to causes that we don't, don't support. And I know that a lot of the other people that were in my union in particular thought a lot like me, but they were afraid to stand up. And they saw exactly what happened whenever I was one of the people that started voicing my uh, uh, opinion and questioning the authority. Uh, I want to add another thing. My father was a Teamster for many, many years, and he was forced to join the Teamsters Union. He uh, had a, uh, a retail deliver retail milk del delivery business. He was a milkman, as everybody knows, and uh, they'd been trying to get him to join that union for a while, and he didn't want to join. Well, one day they placed a picket on the driveway of his warehouse and prevented the semi-load of milk product from coming in and being delivered uh, to his uh, uh, to the warehouse. Without product, he was out of business. He was forced to sign. And then after that, after many years, uh, uh, after many years, he ended up not getting the full pension that he was supposedly promised to get to. So uh, I've seen some, you know, I've seen it from a couple angles here on, on the unions. I think that there's some good points about it, and I'm not, you know, I was a willing member of the union myself, um, but after after you start feeling like money is being taken from you and you have absolutely no voice and, and that uh, you're being, uh, that uh, if you ask any questions, uh, that uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, officials become condescending and, and start threatening your job and your livelihood. At that point, then it does become a personal matter, and it's really hard to uh, uh, be able to uh, support at that point. So, thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Further questions? Say none. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you very much. Anyone else to testify in favor? Rachel Payton with Americans for Prosperity, and I'm here on behalf of our 51,000 members across the state to support Senator Brownsville. Thank you. Did you guys fire Carl Beard? This <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> Any questions of the witness? Yes. Whether I'd like to ma'am that question. <laughs> <laughs> Senator Lowe. Well, I've heard your I've heard your group. What, who, what type of group? <coughs> We're a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization that promotes economic freedom and limited government. And what kind? What is it? Is it a, a business? We're a 501. We're a 501c3 
um, our foundation is, and we're also a 501c4. So just we any are, individual could, could... Any individual can be a member of our How do you track your political donations? How do you let your members know when you make political donations? Um, we don't make political donations. We're a 501c3, so we don't make political donations. We don't receive them. How do you let your members know when you uh, our members spend your money? Our members let us know what types of political, um, what, what political and legislative agenda they want us to follow. Um, we don't. And if someone them. disagrees, how do you handle that? Um, they take their money elsewhere. They won't donate to our organization. Okay. That so, if they don't agree with it, they just leave. You don't have any structure in there to try to determine what your organization's. Um, um, process should be? If they disagree with with what the majority of our members have set up, have set up. How do you decided, determine what the majority of your members believe? We ask them and then they tell us. Okay, so the you go with the majority? Yeah. Okay. So you have an organization where the majority picks leadership and decides their priorities and then spends money accordingly? Yes. Okay. That's exactly what unions do. So, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you for your testimony. Anyone else to speak in favor? Thank you, Ms. <coughs> Seeing none, anyone to testify against? Seeing none. No, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> All those that are opposed, you may start testifying in whatever order you like. Mr. Chairman, I need to go to another committee to vote. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Go ahead. I think we'll be able to handle this for you. I appreciate the committee. I have the committee's time. Thank, Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the committee. My name is Mike Lewis. I'm the Secretary Treasurer of the Missouri AFL-CIO and the lobbyist for the Missouri AFL-CIO. Um, I would just like to say that payroll deductions for both dues and PAC contributions are an agreement reached between the employer, the union, and the employees. It's a prerogative of the employees to enjoy those payroll deductions as negotiated. No one has to agree to give employees those payroll deductions except through the collective bargaining agreement. And once they do it, why would the government, whether it's the federal government or the state government, want to stick their nose in the business of what's going on between an employer, the union, and the employees? Um, in most instances, it's a non-cost um, to, the, to the employer for these two discussions. So once again, it's just an attack. There's no real value to anyone to, to stop um, companies like APD provide that service without a charge or the union and the company agree on a percentage that is deducted that is part of that deduction and the company pays nothing um, either way. So again, this bill is more than just government involving themselves in agreements. It's, um, it, it's just an attack and that's the way the AFL-CIO views this is an attack on unions it's just starting with public sector employees, and we're, we're concerned that it's going to bleed right on through. And I'll be happy to ask any answer any questions. Right. Thank I'd like you. to ask some. <coughs> Thank you for your testimony. Any questions or witnesses? Seeing none. Thank, Thank you for testimony. <coughs> Before you start, I might remind everybody to fill out a fitness form if you haven't, make sure you do that. And when you get in, just state your name for the record. Uh, my name is Charles Delaney. Um, I work for the uh, Bates County Department of Social Services, um, the Children's Division, um, and the 27th Circuit of Missouri. Um, I've taken this day off to come and talk with you um, it, on behalf of the members of my union, the communication, 
workers of America. Um, <clears throat> regarding concerns I have with this bill, um, I'm, I'm a union paying member, and as far as what was stated earlier about political contributions, um, I am voluntarily a member of COPE, which is their political fund. Um, that does not get deducted from my paycheck. That's something I voluntarily signed up to do, and that comes out of my bank account. Um, some people have it deducted from their check, but that's separate from your union dues, so I don't know where they're getting the rest of that. Um, my concern is, as, as an employee, as a state employee, is that um, this bill would make it harder to pay union dues and for the unions to elect. Um, I feel like this bill is singling out unions um, and it's excluding first responders. I'm a child abuse and neglect investigator. My job is to go out and I'm usually the first one on the scene. Does that make me a first responder? And should that exempt me from this bill? I think not. Um, and as far as any consent, um, signed consent is established by um, opting to sign that piece of paper taking your dues out of your check. But that goes towards your union fees. Any political funds are collected in a out of a separate fund. And that's already established. Um, and I worry about the fact that it would weaken our union even more. Um, working for the state, um, we have employees that are union, we have employees that are non-union, um, and that's your right. Um, under uh, <coughs> our union contract and under law, um, regardless of whether they're a union member or not, they still have some of the same benefits that I do, whether they're paying members or not. <coughs> um, Another question I have as far as this bill is um, if they're going after stopping us from being able to pay our union dues um, through, our, through deductions out of our paychecks, are we going to go after other entities such as charitable contributions that we give and all that that go to a certain political party? Um, there's absolutely no good that can come from this bill except to make things harder for workers and the unions that represent them. I thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. oh, you have any questions? Any questions, the witness? Seeing none, thanks for coming in for your testimony. What did you say you came from? Where were you from? Um, Bates County, Butler. Bates County. Yeah, I live in Cedar County. Cedar County? That's a pretty good county. I like Cedar County. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for your testimony. Appreciate it. Anyone else in opposition? Um, my name is Stephanie Hoffman. I live in, I work at for Boone County Child Support. Um, and I took a vacation day today to come down with a uh, few other <coughs> Communication Workers of America uh, members to talk about my concerns with this bill. I've got a few. I, um, I have experienced the transition this bill is talking about, taking union bill, or um, union dues from uh, automatic deduction to uh, payroll, uh, out of payroll deduction, sorry, um, since I promoted out of the bargaining unit. It's time consuming and it is um, a waste of the resources that are already stretched. A lot of people don't pay union dues. I work in the Boone County office there and a lot of, a lot of employees, very few actually pay union dues. Um, so our resources are already stretched pretty thin. Um, I think the bill itself is unnecessary because union membership is already voluntary and so are the political contributions, like he was talking about. And it's potentially unconstitutional since it singles out unions alone out of all the other payroll deductions that are that can already come out. The only effect I see from this bill is wasted time and resources, and it would further weaken our union. And uh, I really don't understand the justification for this bill at all. Thank you. Let me, let me ask you one question. Yeah. If, you, if you did not pay your dues, like you said, you just said that you had a choice. 
Does okay. that really have? Does that really have an effect then on you? I mean, if, for example, if you didn't want to pay it, you might pay it. Does exactly. that hurt you or anything? I'm a supervisor, so technically, I'm not part of the collective bargaining unit that um, is in the agreement between the state and CWA. But I pay my union dues um, because I think the union is important. It needs support. But if I were not a supervisor, I would be in that collective bargaining unit. I would get all the benefits that union members get. That people that pay union dues get. Well, I guess what I'm asking, if you did, it's no big deal. You're not going to nobody's going to say anything to you or anything like that. If anything, if anything, the attitude in my office is that the union should be stayed away from. And I'll find that pretty hard. Thank you for the testimony. Any other questions for us? Same thing. Oh, I'm Thank sorry. Senator Lowe. Thank you. I, I think part of part of there's a, a perception that unions aren't democratic, and so uh, maybe you could talk a little bit about when there's disagreements, how the organization can solve that. Like if you had the great judgment that you wanted to have your union and your organization contribute to Senator Parsons for President of the United States, and everyone else didn't see that, what would you do to convince? Tell me the process to make <coughs> good decisions. I'm trying to use you, Mr. Don't put any money in. That would be my first advice. Do that make right. sense? I guess I don't really understand what you're asking. Like, how do you? Well, I think there's a perception that unions aren't democratic. Well, it's like anything else. Something gets too much. I don't know, like he was talking about the Teamsters. You run into problems between those two specific organizations, that mm -hmm. uh, employer and that Teamsters union. No, I mean just within your union. How do you make decisions in your, within your union? I don't really make many decisions. I'm pretty new, okay. to be honest with you. I've only been with the state for a year and a half. And day one, I mean, I decided I wanted to be part of the union. Uh -huh. Nobody ever pushed me to do it. It was never any kind of... Okay. It was just something that you thought was good to join the, join the union at your meetings? Um, I've done a couple of conference yeah. calls. So know. meetings, just like any other organization that, that has... Uh, any other organization that majority rules and... That's how it goes, to make their decisions, right? As I understand it. Yeah. And everyone has a voice, but sometimes you don't always get your way. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Right. Further questions of the witness? Seeing none, thank you for your testimony. Anyone else in opposition? Chairman, sure, there's a committee. Out of major, uh, speaking, of, speaking on behalf of Missouri NEA, I'm also uh, turning in a form for Richard Martin on behalf of the American Federation of Legal Security and Operation as well. Um, I submitted a uh, written testimony a little while ago by email that's substantially similar as you might expect to the testimony we submitted on Simple 71. Just remind you all that we referred in our testimony last week to the existing statute as it relates to school districts. Uh, and just for for further information, I thought I would mention a typical example of a school board policy, uh, which is an option. School districts get to decide whether or not they even bother. Uh, Columbia Public Schools, I live in Columbia, all salary deductions will normally be subject to board approval and are voluntary on the part of the individual employee, except for deductions for absences not covered by pay uh, The salary deductions, uh, can be authorized when 10 or more employees so request, exactly what the statute says. Deductions can be taken for, but may, are not limited to trade unions, et cetera, exactly the list contained in the statute. Uh, the amount of deducted will be remitted to the organization, company, or association authorized by the employee. And in addition to the amount authorized, the district may deduct any administrative costs of compliance, also required by the statute. Uh, also allows that to be done for the, the payment of 10 more employees requesting to provide deductions uh, or contributing to the continuing committee. And it spells out, not even required by the statute, no employee will be subject to any adverse employment action based on, based on his or her participation or lack thereof in such program. Just wanted to show that not only is that what is called for in the statute, but this being probably the example of MSB's model guidance policy on this issue, is what a typical school district also has on the books is their policy in implementing that. Uh, this statute and this, this po these policies are working. This is not an issue that needs to be uh, revised. This is the way it's working in the public sector. This is the way it's working in school districts. I'd be happy to try to answer any questions. 
Thank you for your testimony. Questions? Seeing none. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anyone else in opposition? Good afternoon, Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, testimony again, uh, similar to your companion bill last week. Uh, just a couple of points I think that uh, 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 that might be helpful. Uh, and I think some of the exchange and discussion here uh, has been good to do some clarification. We have two issues here that we see in the, the legislation. One is about the dues, which is the first paragraph, and then the other being about the voluntary political contributions. I, I want to just emphasize what somebody said here is about taking your money and going elsewhere. I think it was it was good to hear from workers from both sides that they do and don't support the contributions. But frankly, when we talk about the dues, and the AFL noted it last week, there are what's called the Beck rule. They can do fair share fees and pay only a portion of the dues that has any subtract, subtraction of political uh, activities out of it and charitable. And then further, the, pol the, the political contribution on the side is solely voluntary. So I think when, uh, certainly, we always hear from the squeaky wheel and the voices that don't like some of the political activity, but those workers completely have an option to, to remove themselves from all of that. And so it's good that we've had this discussion. I think it's been good education and, and knowledge to get forth here in the hearing. So just want to make those comments and uh, be glad to answer any questions if you have. Thank you. Questions to the witness? Seeing none, thank you. Anyone else to testify in opposition? Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, honorable members of the committee, I'm here to testify again for my bill for myself, and I still work at District 11, and Scott Ramshaw, plumber, flight fitter, local 562 in St. Thank you for your testimony. Any questions? Say none. Anyone else in opposition? Anyone for informational purposes only? Oh, I'm sorry. Are you information or opposition? Opposition, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Me too. Thank right. you. Safe time. Okay. <laughs> One, me too. All right. Anyone for informational purposes? Seeing none, that closes the hearing on Senate Committee Substitute Senate Bill 29. We, I would now uh, would entertain a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Get it, folks. All right. Motion made and second to go into executive session. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Motion carries. We're in executive session. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion now to vote the Senate committee substitute for Senate committee substitute for Senate bills 20, 15, and 19 do pass. Second. <coughs> Motion made and second and voted out. Senate committee substitute for Senate Bill 20. Do pass. Any discussion on that? This is based on what we heard on the floor this week. Uh, seeing none. Senators. Parson. Aye. Sylvie. Aye. Cunningham. Aye. Kehoe. Aye. Swasson. Aye. Lavoda. Nasheed. By your vote of six ayes and zero noes, you have voted out Senate Substitute for Senate Committee Substitute for Senate Bill 20 to pass. The other thing I'd like to remember, uh, remind the committee tomorrow, we will also be going into executive session in the morning at 9 o'clock. We will be in the Persian conference room, and we will be basically exactly out of the sports floor bill for this week. That being said, that concludes the hearing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.